Hey guys, um, it's me. This is Thomas um, with my tanks, and uh, I know you've probably never seen me before, but um, got a lot of things going on, a lot of life changes, um, a lot more hours at work, and a lot of things have changed in the tank. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, do a quick fill in on what's going on. Okay, first of all, I had to take the cribs out. <clears throat> um, I know I love these cribs, but you guys might know um, I work hard in the scape, and uh, anytime I get a chance, um, I'm working like 120 hours a week now, so I'm working a lot. Anytime I get a chance, when I get off work in the morning, I'll flip the light on and I will trim for a minute or do whatever maintenance I see or anything I see out of place. I did get a canister filter and I did order a Jardley 17 millimeter outflow for it and then recently I ordered the Jardley skimmer inflow so I don't have to run my Eheim 350 skim in here all the time anymore. I was getting a little film but um Here's what the cribs were doing. They were tearing up all of this right here. Like every day I would come in, the whole carpet would be covered in fluval stratum. And I was getting algae everywhere. Um, they were getting fluval stratum all over the driftwood. They were digging up all this area here, all this area down here. They've been just really constantly digging. So it's been really hard now. Um, my rotalas back here, uh, some good news about them is they're growing great. Rotunda folias all the way to here. Two stems of, uh, repins, I just put them in there. Uh, they're just, they're not really attached. From here to here is H. Ra or Rotala Hara, however you want to say it. And, uh, a little bit of Ludwigia Arcuata back here. I'm going to extend the Arcuatas down here and put a piece of driftwood in here, take out these Bacopas and um, take some of the ARs maybe. I might clump the ARs into here and then put some Amanias. I don't know, I'm gonna rearrange these. But um, I can do that now because I took the cribs out. And this area over here has been a hard time because the cribs get in here everywhere. They constantly rip out plugs of grass and everything. So um, it should grow better now with less algae without everything being stirred and kicked up all the time, constantly. Uh, Arcuatas in the back, trim those down, and we'll let them grow back in nicely. Let them get bushy. Now my auto back here can eat in peace. I'm gonna get two more of those, maybe one more, I'm not sure. But now that the cribs are out, um, I know you just saw them. There's one. I got I got three Amanos at Petco, but the girl lost one. It jumped the net, I guess, before I got to the bag. So I just got two. So I have two Amanos in here. So I'm going to put some Amanos in here and let these guys do their little work. I mean, look at that. He's going to help me with my carpet there. I'm going to get a couple of those guys. I thought about getting cherries, but... Um, for the price, I'm just going to get a couple of monos for now because um, I haven't been into shrimp before. I plan on getting maybe some ember tetras or neons, I'm not sure. Something to complement the colors of the scape. This area right here, this grass should grow in a little bit more. I put some Leliopsis uh, microsword, a couple of pieces in there, and I put a couple of my... Um, Oh, what's it called? Um, they also call it microsword too. Pygmy chainsword. I got a couple pieces of pygmy chainsword in there too. And if you can see right here, I got a little bit of Marsalia Canada left over from a long time ago. I have some there and some back there by the crypt. The little crypt flamingos, aka pink panthers. Um, if you ever see crypt pink panther or crypt flamingo, it's the same species. Confirmed by ADA. But yeah, the ones back here are doing good. 
the little ones I have in between everywhere, they're doing okay, but they were getting like, they were getting ripped through a lot by the cribs. Um, the little Hygrophila panadafitas that I got, I'm waiting for them to come in. So, we'll see how those guys go. I'm waiting for them to really take hold. These, um, these little hydrocotyl looking guys here, the little buttons, those guys, um, I, it, it's kind of like money wart, I mean, uh, dollar weed, I forget what they call them when they sell them at Petco and everywhere, but I collected these locally, so they don't grow the same, I've been growing these in here, they've, they've actually spread, they spread pretty wide, so they make a really long runner and then pop up one here and there, so, I'm liking those guys, they grow slow, uh, my Narite can eat in peace now, and, um, this piece of hygrophila is doing really good. You see, it's starting to get its red. One reason that my rotalas and things aren't really getting their reds in has been because, um, you know, when you watch, when you see YouTubers and their plants are super, super red, that's for a reason. It's not just bright light. If you try bright light like that, you're not going to get that. Um, it's nitrate limiting. So, depending on what you're dosing, if you're dosing something that's high in nitrates, you know, then you're you're not going to get that. But you need to have enough phosphates to not get hard green spot algae. I have a little hard green spot algae here and there on the plants. So, I mean, I need a little more phosphate in there. I used to think phosphates caused algae, but actually phosphates isn't a bad problem as long as the phosphates is more than your nitrates. But um, that's a whole nother thing but um if you want your plants like the arcuatas and things like that plants that aren't normally red if you want these guys to turn red you need nitrate limiting so um as far as fertilizers go there are ada fertilizers they're they're limited in nitrate and phosphates um sarah brand it's a little kind of a german brand um they don't really add nitrates and phosphates a lot to theirs, so if you get Sarah brand, like my one of my local fish stores carries Sarah brand root tabs and uh, liquid fertilizer, and it doesn't have any nitrates or phosphates. It's like all the other main stuff, potassium and all the other iron and everything, um, and trace minerals. Uh, this, By the way, this carpet has grown in more, so it does look a lot better, but there's still a little there's still little dry spots in it but it, it'll come around i think it's because the cribs were pecking at it so much um, the little middle area gets a little bit algae but it's it's more of a dead spot for the flow but um these little shrimps they should help i'm going to get a couple more of them the anubias variegated the whites i had put them over here all my anubias and everything like that i stuck over here on this side in the shade areas and now you probably can't see them very well but they're doing really good now they were growing a lot of algae so we'll see how that all goes s reppins you know um a little bit lower light plant they're doing good over here on this side so i am kind of keeping my low light over here and um my light is situated kind of more kind of to the back more like heavy in this area with the highlight plants uh, kind of heavy to get a little red out of the crypts I need reds and browns from the crypts so you know that takes a little more light if you have really low light these same exact crypts are going to be like really easy green and soft but they they kind of harden up and get leopard designs and they turn this is an Albita Costata. You can get those real cheap and readily at a lot of places. Tropica makes like Albita Browns. Albita Reds are specialty uh, for softer water, but Albita Browns, you see them a lot. Well, if you get regular Albitas Costata, they do grow like this. Oh, by the way, one more fertilizer that's good for limiting nitrates for reddening up your plants also is... Uh, Two hour aquarist it's a uh, Dennis Wong's fertilizer so I did order some of that but um that's it big changes lots of work hours not many videos and uh, well 
Uh, thanks for watching.